why would you wear that outside of an eight-year-old's birthday party? Well, my answer to you is why not? <laughs> What's up everyone? Welcome to the Split Seed where the moment is right now. My name is Jenny and today I'm excited to talk about some upcoming fall fashion trends. I'm gonna talk about some that I'm very excited for, that I wanna try out, that I'm really into, and then I'm also going to touch on a few that I think I'm just going to skip. And then not all of these are actual trends in the sense that they were on trends lists or on the fall runways or anything like that. Some of them are just things that are trending in my own mind, in my own life, and in my own little fashion sphere. And finally, before we get started, I wanna point out that this is just for fun. Ultimately, I think that trends and trends lists are pretty useless, other than maybe giving you inspiration or introducing you to a new idea or concept that you've never heard before. But as far as using trends lists and following trends as a guide to what you should and shouldn't be wearing, we're passing on all of that. Everything I'm talking about today is just my opinion. I think people look awesome and amazing and cool and beautiful in every sort of style and fashion and trend. So if I talk about something that I don't like, that you love, you should keep wearing it. We should all just wear what we want. So with that little disclaimer out of the way, the first trend that I wanna talk about that I am really into is what I'm going to title minimal bra tops. So we all know that wearing bralettes and things like that as a layering piece underneath other clothes has been a thing for a long time. That's nothing new. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is wearing a little bra top that is just on the edge of being a little too revealing. So I've been seeing this minimal bra top look popping up in a couple different ways. And I think it's just really fun that it can come in so many different styles. For example, I've seen some of these little tops made with little vintage embroidered fabrics. I really like this one that looks like it's literally just made out of some vintage doilies. Then sticking to that more traditional bra shape, I've seen a lot that include things like beads, some that are even made out of metal, which is really cool, leaning into that kind of medieval vibe. And then one of my favorite iterations of this minimal bra top trend is sort of the crafty DIY look. And this can obviously be done in a million ways. Again, bringing in things like beads or crochet, different textures of fabric. Oftentimes I've seen them with really fun details like fringe or something like that. So I really love sort of the more DIY feel to some of these tops. Then expanding out from that more traditional bra shape, I also think that just more revealing tops fall into this category too. And for that, I'm talking about tops that maybe have some type of holes or cutouts in them, whether that's from the way that the fabric is stitched together or just the cut of the shirt. In some way, the top is just this close to revealing too much, but it is strategically covering in all the right spots. Then also just going with a sheer top with nothing underneath, leaning a little bit more into that free the nipple completely bare look, I think falls into this category too. Obviously that would be taking it a little bit more into the extreme, which I am still completely for and pro, but if showing everything is a little bit too much, then I think you can still participate in this trend by wearing one of these little minimal bra tops layered over an actual shirt with more coverage. And I think this trend might be fun for me personally in my own mind because historically in my life, I haven't had the best body image relationship with my chest. I have very small A cups and so I've struggled before with wishing they were bigger. I don't feel that way anymore, but I do feel very sort of empowered by this trend. The next one I'm going to talk about is definitely on every single fall trends list that I've seen, and that is the color cherry red. I don't know what it is, I just have never been a big fan of red. I gravitate much more heavily towards cool toned colors, usually more earthy toned colors like greens and browns and blues and things like that, so red has just never really been my thing. And I think that if I were to go out and try and buy some red items to go with this trend, I would just never wear them. I wouldn't gravitate towards them. And even more, I don't think it would go with anything that I currently have in my closet. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to say that this one is a pass for me. The next one I'm gonna talk about isn't something that I've seen being really big out on the internet at large, but 
it has been something that is trending in my own life on my own Pinterest board and my personal wardrobe for quite a while. And the term I'm going to use for this personal trend of mine is weird bags. And when I say weird bags, I have a very specific thing in mind. I'm not talking about novelty bags necessarily. So I'm not talking about things like a purse that is cartoonishly shaped like a hamburger or something like that. That's not what I'm talking about. The bags I'm talking about just have this sort of certain difficult to name element of oddness to them. And a lot of times it comes in the form of texture. So a big one would be bags with some sort of 3D element, whether that is something sort of built into or stuck onto the bag, maybe a ruffle, maybe something fuzzy, something that kind of springs out from the main body of the bag itself. The 3D texture could come in the form of beads, whether those be small beads to create a really interesting and unusual pattern or larger beads that just really lend themselves again to an unexpected heavy texture. And I think maybe that is the defining factor of this weird bag that I'm trying to articulate is that they all have some level of imperfection. They're all a little bit wonky. They look like they might kind of be falling apart. They look handmade and DIY. Some people may even call them ugly, but if that's the case, that just means they absolutely fit the category. All right, the next one is something that I have seen on multiple trends lists and it has a lot of different names. The two names for this trend that I like the most are either business core or Wall Street chic. But whatever you call it, the elements of the trend are the same and those are a classic tailored fit and also taking clothes that would normally be part of an everyday office attire and just relaxing it a little bit. And this is a trend that I will absolutely be skipping. And I think the main reason for that is because I have worked many jobs in the past where I was required to wear business casual clothes and I just never liked it. I never felt like myself having to dress in business casual. I felt like my creativity was just stifled and I have been very intentional with my work life to find a job where I don't really have to do that anymore. So the last thing I want is to choose to dress in business clothes when I don't have to. The next trend is nothing new. It has been around for at least a couple years, still going strong, and that is sheer dresses. Even though sheer clothing, both layered and unlayered, has been a thing for a while now, I am still super excited about it. And really what I'm excited about is sheer dresses specifically. There are just so many endless ways to style sheer dresses layered under things, layered over things. I mean, I guess that's kind of, there are two options, either over or under something, but still you can, you can make it look so many different ways. And even though this has been around for a while, I personally haven't played around with it that much yet. So I'm happy that it is still something that people are talking about. There's still a lot of inspiration out there and I'm ready to jump on the train. And there are two sort of iterations of the sheer dress skirt that I am in particular excited to try. The first one is layering a sheer organza material dress with a traditional tailored suit. So far, I've only found one photo online that shows this pairing, but I had never seen that particular pairing before. And when I saw this photo, my mind just expanded out into the universe. And I recently thrifted a tailored suit, a matching set, and I would have never thought to pair a sheer dress with that suit. I haven't even really styled it yet, but now that is the first thing I'm going to try and do with the suit is pair it with a sheer dress. And the second sort of new take on the sheer dress or skirt that I'm excited to see more of is the non-organza or tulle material. So it could be more of a knitted or crochet style skirt that is still see-through because it has holes in it. And that may not be what people are traditionally talking about when they say sheer clothing, but I think it still counts because you can still see through it. You can see what's underneath. So it's sheer, I guess. I don't know, it works in my own brain. And I think it's kind of cool because again, it adds a lot more texture and unexpected variety into an outfit. 
The next one is a trend that I've seen on every single fall fashion list, and it is the reimagined peplum. And I'm gonna tell you right here, right now, it is an absolutely not for me. And my reasoning for this is very personal. See, I was around the first time peplum was a thing. And I wasn't just around as in I existed. I was around in that I was in my early 20s playing with fashion. So it was, it was prominent in my brain. I didn't like it then, I don't like it now. Because when I think of peplum, all I can see is the 2010 style of peplum that always was paired with neon colors, oversized necklaces, tights under everything. It was a bodycon. And even though all the peplum tops that are coming out now are reimagined in some way, maybe they have a looser fit, maybe the peplum is a little more drop waist, they have something new going on, I still can't do it. And here's an unpopular opinion. That tie front peplum top from Ghani, I don't like it. I know a lot of people like it and it's been very popular. And if that's you, I think you should keep wearing it. I'm sure it looks amazing on you. But for me, it just doesn't work. I don't like the fit of it. I don't like peplum. With all that being said, I do like to play devil's advocate every once in a while. And for me, I do have one example of a technically peplum or reimagined peplum top that I do like. And it is this photo where it is a peplum top, I guess, but it is very unlike the 2010 version I ranted about a minute ago. But I think what I like about it that makes it okay in my brain is the fact that it is a very long peplum. It's not that little short tutu flouncy shape, but much more of a long flowing shape. And then the fact that it's in a matching set with the pants, somehow this one works. Overall though, the reimagined peplum is a skip for me. Okay, the next trend I wanna talk about, if you can already tell, is one that I am pretty excited about, and it is the apocalypse grunge core aesthetic. Obviously there is heavy influence from grunge itself in this aesthetic, but also a little bit of punk and emo influence, along with just that little sprinkling of dystopian post-apocalyptic vibe. So it's kind of a mishmash of a lot of things and it can be interpreted in so many different ways, which is part of what makes it fun. But I do think there are a handful of elements of the apocalypse grunge aesthetic that do sort of tie everything together. So one of the first things I notice as being a main component of this aesthetic is just the heavy layering involved. And that includes layering of clothing pieces themselves, but also layering of textures, a lot of layering of pattern. We see a lot of pattern mixing and in general, just sort of a messy deconstructed look to the overall outfit. And one of the patterns that I see popping up over and over again with this aesthetic, at least for the fall season, is of course plaid. And everyone knows that plaid is a fall staple. It's no different in the apocalypse grunge look, but I think it works especially well for this look because it layers so nicely and just adds a lot of that grunge punk depth to the aesthetic. And even though plaid is one of the more prominent patterns of this aesthetic right now, I have seen quite a bit of florals mixed in too, and I just think that that adds such a fun element to it all. There are so many different elements and styles all melding together with this aesthetic that you can take it in a bazillion different directions and still feel like you are participating in the trend. So yeah, overall the apocalypse grunge look is probably the one that I'm most excited to explore and lean into this fall. The next trend I've seen is one that I don't think has ever really gone out of style, it's been around forever, but it's never really been my jam, and that is snakeskin print. In general, animal print just really isn't something that I've ever gravitated to, and I think the reason that it's never really resonated with me personally is because when I see animal print styled, I usually see it in much more of a glam sort of styling than I prefer. My personal style tends to be a lot more laid back and I just haven't seen very many examples of snakeskin styles to fit that vibe. 
So until I see someone grunging up a pair of snakeskin boots or wearing that print in a way that feels a little bit more relaxed and casual, I don't think I am very interested in it personally. All right, we are on to the last trend that I want to talk about in this video. And once again, it is definitely not something that I have seen being a thing in the broader world by any means. It is literally just something that has been trending for me personally lately. And that thing is statement headwear. There are so many examples of this that I am really into, so many options that it could really go any direction. But I'll talk about a few specific examples that I have really been interested in lately. Starting off a little bit more simple, we can talk about hats, but not just any old hat. I'm talking about a hat that has some unexpected element to it, usually in the form of a really over-the-top texture, maybe an over-the-top or unexpected shape, or some way that it's worn that is just a little bit weird. And then one combination of different types of headwear that I am really obsessed with right now is pairing a balaclava underneath a baseball hat. And I don't know if it is the combination of patterns that people are using in these pictures that I'm looking at or the nature of mixing a more sort of grandma, maybe floral pattern on the fabric with the more graphic nature of the baseball hat. But either way, it's just a very cool juxtaposition between the two that intrigues me. Either earmuffs or headphones, I think really fit well into this statement headwear category too, as long as they are something, again, that is a little bit over the top and unexpected. I've seen so many examples of cute crocheted earmuffs in fun shapes. And then for headphones, kind of the same thing. I've seen so many people making really cool headphone covers that have unique aspects to them that really just takes it to a next level. After those examples, I am going to talk about a couple types of statement headwear that I really love, but that are definitely more avant-garde and not necessarily wearable for every person. The first being a headpiece that resembles one of those styles of headpieces that maybe you would see on a 1920s flapper. So something that is really form-fitting to the head, maybe made out of beads or something like that. It has kind of a heavy drooping look to it. Who says I can't go about my day wearing this amazingly intricate headpiece that makes me feel like a 1920s goddess? I don't think anybody's telling me that I can't do that, and they're not telling that to you either. And this may not appeal to everybody, but I am pretty into the look of a childlike, crafted DIY tiara. And I know it sounds odd, and you're kind of right. Maybe it is odd, and why would you wear that outside of an eight-year-old's birthday party? Well, my answer to you is, why not? I don't know why these are speaking to me, but I've seen so many cute, little tiaras that are dainty and just subtle enough that I think you could pull it off wearing it out in public. Some of my favorite examples are little tiaras people have handmade out of a very thin wire and beads, or, and this is where it gets, extreme pipe cleaners. Just imagine making one of these little tiaras with your favorite colors of sparkly pipe cleaners and favorite beads and maybe another pretty little trinket that you attach on top. Why, why wouldn't you want to wear that? Why wouldn't we want to make our lives and our clothes and our self-expression a little bit more whimsical? I'm dreaming big with this one. I'm stepping out of my comfort zone. I'm trying to expand my box. And I don't know if I'll get to the point where I would actually wear my handmade pipe cleaner tiara out to the grocery store, but I might, and I'm gonna try and work to get to that point. So those are all the fall trends that I wanted to talk about today, whether they were trends from an actual list or things that are just trending in my own little universe. But either way, I hope you enjoyed listening to me chat about them. And thank you so much for watching. If you do like thrifted fashion, secondhand interiors and art, those are the things that I like to talk about here at Split Seed. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and like this video. I put out new videos every Thursday. So until next time, let's say all hail Norm, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!